Welcome to my new video series, the Ascend 12T build. Over the next few months, I'm going to be heavily modifying my kayak and documenting each step along the way. By doing this, I hope I can inspire some of you to build the kayak in your dreams and show you that you don't need the most expensive kayak on the market to have all the features that you want. You just need a little bit of creativity and ingenuity. On today's episode, we're going to be modifying the seat on this kayak, something that I see a lot of interest in online in kayak fishing forums. This modification will raise the height of the seat by about 6 inches and will also allow you to add accessories as well. I'll be showing you how I added a fly rod holder and beverage holders to my raised seat modification. The seat that Ascend has included with the 12T is very nice comfort wise and it also seems very durable for how lightweight it is. However, as you can see the seat sits very low in the hull of the boat and is not very well secured to the hull either. This makes it very difficult to stand up from this low of a position and it also makes it more difficult to fish while seated and get ample leverage while paddling. This design that I've come up with solves all of these problems. This modification only requires a few cheap and easily attainable materials and does not even require you to drill holes into your kayak if you choose to skip the last step. More on that later. The main material that we'll be using to build the frame is angle steel, and you can pick this up in 4 foot sections at Lowe's, Home Depot, or any other of your local hardware stores, and you'll need 2 4 foot sections and you'll have a little bit left over. And you need to make sure that you get the steel and not the aluminum, as aluminum is not nearly as strong or durable. We'll need half inch machine bolts, washers, and nuts to secure the parts of the frame together. An adhesive promoting primer and a spray paint color of your choice that will work on metal. I generally use Rust-Oleum products because I find that they are the best quality. Additionally, you'll also need some black zip ties and foam pipe insulation, also found at any of your local hardware stores. And of course, you'll also need some type of tool that you can use to cut through the steel, such as a grinder or a hacksaw. I also mentioned adding accessories to this modification. The first thing that I'll be adding is going to be beverage holders behind the seat to avoid getting fish slime all over my drinks. I picked this cup holder up in the automotive section at my local hardware store. And finally, I'll be adding fly rod holders that secure the fly rods to the side of the kayak out of my way. I'll be doing this using these clips that I found that you use to hang brooms, shovels, and other garden tools on the wall of your garage. We're going to start the project by measuring out the front part of the seat frame. We're going to use these two shelves that are naturally formed into the kayak. And note that I have already cut my steel to save time on the filming process of this video. But what you'll do is place the steel across the kayak and then make a mark right here and go ahead and make your cut and make sure that it's the correct length to fit between the two notches on your kayak. The ends of the steel should line up and fit right into these corners nice and snug. You want to make sure that the piece is not too long because the steel will dig into the plastic of your kayak. And you want to make sure that it's not too short because then it'll try to move around. Measure twice and cut once to avoid wasting an entire piece of steel. Next, we're going to measure out and cut the rear section of our seat, doing the exact same thing we did on the front. The steel should span from here to here because this is a perfect sturdy mounting point. Once again, my steel is already cut, but what you'll do is place the steel across, measure, make a mark, and then make your cut. And the steel should line up between the two walls of your kayak, and you should end up with something that looks like this at this point of the project. We're now going to measure out the side pieces to secure the front piece and the back pieces of steel together. And to do this, we need to place the seat on the front and back piece so we know that we have the correct distance between the two. Use the front piece of steel to make sure the entire thing is lined up by making sure that it's pushed into those two corners and make sure that the seat is pushed into the corners of the steel pieces on the front and the back. It's important to make sure that the front and back of the seat is lined up on the steel correctly because if it's not, you could end up with measurements that don't match up. Also make sure that the seat is centered on the kayak, so the pieces of steel that hold the front and back together line up with the sides of the kayak correctly. Once you have the seat in the correct position, use zip ties to secure the seat to the metal. This will ensure that it doesn't shift around while you measure out and cut the side pieces, which could potentially mess up the shape of the frame and make it not line up on the kayak correctly. Now place your next piece of steel along the kayak from the front to the back pieces of steel that we've already placed and secured. To make the measurements for the two side pieces, use the holes on the front and the back of the frame and make sure that they line up. Once they do, make your mark and go ahead and cut your pieces off. 
Once all four pieces are cut, you can remove your seat and go ahead and set it aside. Make sure all four of your corners are still lined up, and then put a washer over one of your half-inch machine bolts and go ahead and feed it through all four corners. Now put another washer over the bottom of the bolt and put the nut on all four corners on each bolt, but make sure not to tighten them down all the way just yet. Once you have all four bolts loosely secured to each corner, notice how the pieces of metal on the side can still slide due to the size of the holes in the steel. You want to make sure that both the side pieces are pushed all the way together as tight as they will go, as close to each other as they can be. And this is why we left the bolts loose, so we could make this adjustment before we tighten the bolts down. Once you're sure that the frame is perfectly square, go ahead and tighten all four corners as tight as they will go. Now that the frame is tightened down and held together securely, go ahead and place your seat back into it. The front and the back pieces of your seat should be butted up into the elbows of the steel and there shouldn't be very much forward or backwards movement. Any movement can cause the seat to feel unstable. Now notice how my seat has quite a bit of movement, so I need to loosen up the bolts on all four corners and try to bring the steel pieces closer together to fix this problem. And I was actually able to only loosen up the front two corners and notice how I left the seat in the frame. That way I could use it as a reference point while pushing the steel pieces together to see the results of doing so. Notice now when I try to wiggle the seat there's virtually no forward and backwards movement which is exactly what we were looking for. The great thing about using this angle steel to build the frame of the seat is all of the holes all the way around that you can use to attach various accessories such as bins to drop your tackle box in, or in this case, in the next step, the cup holders that I'm going to be adding. I'm also going to be adding a couple of fly rod holders to my seat modification. This is the point of the assembly process where any accessories that you want added should be bolted on. The reason for this is the final step of this project is adding foam around the steel to protect you from the sharp corners. So anything that you want to add at a later time, you'll have to cut through the foam to mount it to the frame. This is the cup holder that I'll be using, and as I said earlier at the beginning of the video, I found this for only a couple bucks at my local hardware store in the automotive section, but you can find these anywhere that sell automotive parts. As you can see, I've already drilled holes in the back to mount this to the steel frame. And we're going to be mounting this behind the seat on the right corner because I'm right handed. I want it behind the seat because I found that having the cup holder in front of the seat allows fish slime to get all over your drink which kind of sucks. Remove your seat so it's easier to put the bolts through the holes and tighten the nuts down onto them. It's important for me to note that you need to put the bolts through from the seat side of the frame. If you put them the other way, too much bolt will be sticking out and it won't allow the seat to drop into the frame correctly. Place a nut on each of the bolts and go ahead and tighten them down. Now we're going to make and attach the fly rod holder accessory. And this is what I've come up with using the cutoff end of the steel piece that we used to make the frame out of. This piece is about 6 inches long and I used my grinder to cut this L-shaped piece out of the end of it that'll be over the side of the kayak. And we're going to use these holes to bolt up to the holes just like this on the back of the seat raise modification. Also notice how the L-shape that I was talking about fits perfectly over the side of the kayak without digging into it. And this is where those two wall hanger clips come in, and these are going to bolt up directly on top of this modification side by side to hold my fly rods lengthwise down the side of my kayak, just perfectly out of the way. So the first thing we need to do to make this accessory is obviously you need to have a 6 inch piece that the holes line up perfectly, and it sticks out almost to the edge of your kayak. Then you need to take your cutting tool and you need to cut this L shape into here and remove that piece so it fits over the side of your kayak just like that without touching it so you don't wear a nice little strip into the plastic. Once you have this piece, the first thing we need to do is we need to attach our actual brackets that are going to hold the fly rods 
onto the top like that because once you bolt this down, you won't be able to get a tool underneath here to tighten the nut down. Place one of our half inch machine bolts through the top of the clip and then go ahead and put it on the metal piece and then put a washer over the bottom and put your nut on and go ahead and tighten it down. Do the same with your second clip and you should end up with something that looks like this. Now using our machine screws and washers and nuts, we're going to mount this thing to the frame. And it's important to make sure once again that you put the bolt through from the seat side so you don't impede the seat sliding into the frame correctly. Once you have the nuts loosely tightened onto the bolts, push the frame back in and then adjust the accessory accordingly so the bottom isn't digging into the plastic on your kayak. Once you have the accessory in the correct position, finish tightening down the bolts. This is what your completed fly rod holder should look like. And before we continue, we should of course make sure that the fly rod locks in correctly as it's supposed to and lines up down the side of the kayak. And in this case, it looks like it does. If it doesn't, of course, loosen up your bolts and make adjustments to your clips. I should also note that on the front of the kayak, I used another type of wall hanger clip to make sort of a cradle for the fly rods to sit in so they're not flopping all over the place. Our project is almost complete and all that we really have left to do is place the foam on the steel frame, but before we do that, I'm going to apply a protective coat of paint to ensure that the metal is weatherproof and also to make it look just a little bit better and match the color scheme of my kayak. The first thing that I'm going to apply to the metal is going to be an adhesive promoting primer. This is very important because you need to get the paint to stick to the metal, which can be difficult. Apply the primer evenly all over the surface of the entire frame and then let it dry. It only takes a few minutes. To save on video time, I didn't show spraying the bottom, but obviously I did and make sure you do too. The next thing we're going to apply is going to be our black Rust-Oleum spray paint. You can use any color you want, I just chose flat black because it blends in with the color of my kayak. Just like you did with the primer, apply the paint evenly and make sure that you don't apply too much because you'll get runs in the paint and it'll look bad and it won't dry correctly. And to ensure that the paint took a strong hold on the metal, I let it dry overnight, and you should too. Patience is the key to a good paint job. After letting the paint dry overnight, this is what you should be left with. Nice, even coat with no runs. I should also note that at this point I applied a clear coat enamel to the entire frame and also let that dry overnight. Now that all of our paint's dry, go ahead and put your seat back in the frame. It should be pretty snug. Now we're going to officially secure the seat to the frame using zip ties. Alternatively, if you want the seat to be able to be removed quickly, you can secure it using other types of tie downs that can be taken off quickly. I found that you can get the zip ties tightened down most effectively if you rotate the actual locking part around to the back side of the seat frame. Make sure that you use a sufficient amount of zip ties to secure the seat to the frame. I used five across the front. and three across the rear. If you don't have a cup holder modification like I do, you could put five across the back side also, but three will do. Now use a pair of scissors or clippers and cut the ends of the zip ties off. And make sure one final time that all the zip ties are tightened down as far as they will go. Now for the final step, applying our foam pipe insulation. Place the foam up to the metal piece and make sure that it's the correct length and then evenly and cleanly cut it off with a sharp pair of scissors. Use a sharp razor blade and your scissors to cut the foam to be able to wrap around the frame of the seat.
Once you've got your foam cut, go ahead and place it around the steel piece of the seat, making any last minute adjustments with your scissors and your razor knife if needed. Now use zip ties once again and tightly secure the foam to the pieces of steel and once again try to make the locking mechanism of the zip tie on the back side of the foam piece. Repeat this process for the entire length of the steel piece until the entire piece of foam is secured. Then use your scissors to cut off all the ends of the zip ties. Something very similar to this is what you should be left with. Repeat the process on the back side of the frame covering up all those sharp corners and edges. Once you've applied all the foam to the seat frame, go ahead and test fit the entire unit onto the kayak. One final step that I did on my kayak is I used an old pair of snowboard binding straps to make a locking mechanism that'll hold the seat down in the event the boat capsizes. This is the only step that requires drilling holes in the kayak. If you wish to add this accessory, simply drill pilot holes into the kayak and then secure each piece to the boat with a single screw. One final accessory that I added to the seat modification is actually something that my wife recommended and it's these bungee cords that lock down to the seat frame and hold the seat from falling forward. Last year while I was standing up fishing in the kayak, the seat closed and I didn't realize it, so when I went to sit down, I fell into the water, and this will prevent that from happening to you. And that is just about it for this seat raise modification. The seat should now be sitting between five and six inches higher, which will give you a much higher vantage point to see down into the water, which will help you spot fish a lot easier. You'll also be able to stand up much easier because you won't be sitting all the way down into the bottom well of the kayak. And additionally, you'll have a lot more leverage while paddling. If the stability of having a raised seat is something that worries you, don't worry. I've put this modification through rigorous testing and it works just perfectly. The kayak is just as stable as it was before and it's a whole lot easier and more fun for me to use. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that this modification works out well for you. If you enjoyed, stay tuned for the next parts of the series which will be different modifications to this kayak. You can follow me on my YouTube channel and Instagram and Facebook at CKW Kayak Angler. Thank you guys so much for watching.